This is an intermediate video on how to photograph the moon. Now, the equipment that you need for this isn't going to be that extreme, but the processing side is where we get a little bit more in depth and a little bit more advanced. The results though are very stellar. So for my equipment tonight, I'm using an Olympus E1 Mark III, which that particular type of camera is not essential for what we're going to do tonight. Really, any Olympus camera that can shoot video, specifically 4K video, uh, will help and will give you the greatest results here. You can do this with 1080 HD video, and, and that, by the way, is because we're not really gonna take a picture of the moon. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take a video of the moon. And by taking a video of the moon, we're going to basically capture many hundreds, even thousands of images, and we're going to use software to stack them all together and find the absolute sharpest ones and pick them from the stack and then use those to create our final image. Now for the lens, I'm using the 100 to 400 millimeter f5 to f6.3. And I also have a 1.4x teleconverter in here tonight, so that's a bit of a step up of the focal length that I have versus the last video that I did. And if you want a more, uh, an easier video on how to photograph the moon, I would suggest looking that one up. For tonight's photography session, you really just need a tripod. Now I know I have mine mounted on my Skywatcher Adventurer Pro, which is a tracking mount, but really you don't need a tracking mount all you really need is a tripod for this technique. All right, now for focal lengths. Okay, I know in the last video when we were taking stills, we were using the entire four thirds format. And for that, you need about a thousand millimeter focal length. For this, however, because we're gonna be using video and video is 16 by nine uh, format basically, and that's the ratio at least, it's a more panoramic format. And so it's a little bit shorter and much wider. That means that you're not going to need as long a focal length to do this. And right now, 560 millimeters is actually a pretty good choice. Really, maybe a 600 millimeter or 650 thereabouts might be the most ideal. But uh, for this particular scenario, this is actually going to be an almost perfect lens for this. It's just about completely dark. Now, one thing you really do not need to worry about when shooting the moon is light pollution or for that matter, even having lights on around you. Now, I've got my red lights on tonight, which I typically always have on, but if you were to turn on your porch lights to illuminate your equipment, that's totally fine. And matter of fact, I would actually suggest you that you do that because then you will be able to kind of see what you're doing in the dark. And the moon is a fairly bright object anyways, so you're not going to interfere at all with the video footage that you're going to capture. Now, in the words of Robin Wong, let's do this. All right, as far as the rest of the settings in the camera go, you can leave things on like shading compensation, noise reduction, all of those things can be set up just like you would be shooting a daytime photo. Now we're gonna go into the menu, which we press the menu button here, and we're mainly going to be concerned with just the video settings right here. The second option here, specification settings, will allow us to select the type of video that we want to shoot. And I'm going to use the 4K 24p option tonight. Noise filter standard, white balance. We're gonna do daytime white balance. And warm color can be kept off. The mode, of course, you're going to want to be in full manual. Hit menu again, come back to the main screen. There we go. Now we can control the exposure because by default, it's going to really want to blow out the moon. And you can decrease this and just place it right there. And that right there looks about right. We're at F9, 125th of a second. And now for the easy part, we just basically hit record. We're gonna see the camera's gonna settle out there. It shook for a little while because I was touching it. But now we're just basically gonna to to let it sit here and record about five minutes of video. And then we're done. It's really that easy. 
All right, now that we have captured our images and we've put them here on the laptop, we're going to open up a new application called Link EOS, or Link EOS? I'm not sure how you say it. It's an older application that's been around for a while. It's fairly easy to use, and it's available on the Mac, and I think also the PC, but not sure about the PC. So, it's... It's pretty simple. We start on the left and we work our way to the right to a finished image. And down, we're in the first tab here, the list tab. And we're just going to simply click on the plus button here. And we're going to navigate to, uh, where did I store these? Moon 2. And here's one of our videos that we selected. Let's, let's do the third one. I think this had a better stack in it. So we're going to open that. And this may take a little while to load, okay? So I'm gonna go and get something to eat and come back. Okay, we're back. Now this part is pretty simple. So right now every single image is selected, okay? And we're going to go to the next tab and basically we're just going to select a parameter here. Actually, we don't even need to do that. <laughs> what we're going to do is we're actually going to select one image, our first image. All right? And you're going to want to reduce the size of this until you can actually see the whole moon. And then with your cursor, you're going to draw this red rectangle. And what this will do is this will give LinkUOS a reference. Okay, We need to align every image to this portion right here. And then it will give us this align tab. We're going to click on this. And this time this is going to take a while and on the last thing I said just opening the pictures that actually turned out to be pretty quick but it's going to randomly go through and eventually put down all the different coordinates for how these images need to be lined up shifted scaled rotated whatever so that they all line up and we'll come back after another snack oh I'm gonna gain weight in doing this Okay, it just finished. And, and I have it programmed to make a little sound when it's done. Uh, you can program it right here in Preferences under General. Yeah, it'll make the little end processing sound, the hero sound. Which you might want it to do that because you're probably going to step away from this thing while it does its thing. I, I'm using the very latest MacBook Pro with an i9 processor and it still takes a while to do all this stuff. So next we're going to advance on to the Analyze tab. In the Analyze tab, we're basically going to try to determine what the quality of each of these images are. And once again, we've got to draw our little red box around the object that we're going to stack. And that's going to bring up this right here, the Analyze button. And so we're going to hit Analyze. And this goes a little bit faster. As you can see here it's starting to build up and it's giving each image a rating and we'll come back when this is done. Okay, now the fun starts. So the software has analyzed all the images and it's giving each one a quality rating. Now right here it's actually going to give you the top and bottom numbers. The, bottom, the worst image we took was rated at a 2.09 and the best one was almost three times better than that, 4.72. And so what we're going to do is run the slider across and I generally like around around 50 something images so that's 4.2 so it's only going to stack images that are 4.2 and better and you can even click on this and actually type in a value that you want and what that will do is as you can see up here at the top all these have been deselected the ones that are of lower quality and that's kind of Scroll down here, ways up. There's one right there. That's that's a kind of above the rest. And there's oh, we just passed some that were a little bit better. Oh, there's there's a little group right there. And and sometimes these good batches of images they come in groups, which you know it, it's because of the atmosphere, what it's doing. So now we're going to advance onto the next tab up here, the stack tab. And so we click on stack, and then once again, we got to draw our rectangle here. And this is the part of the image that we're going to stack. And you have a couple different options here. We're just going to do a standard stack. 
we hit stack okay and so right here is your indicator as to what's what's going on and it's kind of the only thing that gives you a progress bar depending on the resolution of the files that you're stacking depending on the speed of your computer this could take a while I mean this could take over an hour two hours even like I, the first one that I did I stacked 100 pictures at least I chose 100 pictures and it took it just about two hours to stack the final image um, if you stacking about 10 or 15 it should only take about 20 minutes or so uh, this is 40 images so this might take as much as an hour we'll see okay here we are at the end so first make sure this right here is selected the image stack that we just stacked essentially and then we, over here in the actual view pane we can kind of scroll it usually always starts at the bottom left corner of the picture we can kind of scroll into our image and here it is at a hundred percent and and when we stacked it we did tell the double size so whatever 4k is uh, this image will now be twice the resolution of that you know actually I can kind of zoom out a little bit here now there are some editing options here now but before you go and start doing any of these other four tabs here I would highly recommend that you go and do a save as like save a new version of this and the reason why is because much of the editing that's done in the deconvolution the unsharp mask and the wavelet options uh, these three are not non-destructive in other words you can't go back okay and I've ruined a couple pictures using some of the different settings that are in here so under deconvolution there's radiuses and thresholds and then in the unsharp mask there's of course radius and gain and then you can go further into wavelet which gives you even more options now the processing tab in mine is just going to show as a white box but that's because i'm in the dark option for osx if you change osx to the the normal daytime uh, interface which has everything as a gray and the text black then this right here will be visible and you'll actually be able to see all of your options at once okay in the in the processing tab but just remember these these are not non-destructive so once you make the edits you can't technically go back so it's good to save a version and then make some edits then maybe open another version and try again and do that a couple times until you get something that you kind of like because there are some pretty incredible and very powerful sharpening techniques in this software now with that I just saved out basically what the stack gave me and I'm going to go here into Photoshop and show you on the left here this is the picture that we just did this is the stack from the 4k video of which there were 3,000 frames and we stacked about 40 of them the sharpest ones and then on the right here this this picture was taken the next night using some of the techniques that I outlined in my very first moon video all right and with that we used the Olympus high resolution mode with a, a amount that was tracking the moon at the moon's rate and we took about a dozen photos and then we selected the sharpest ones and we we actually stacked them here in Linkios but as you can see even though this is an 80 megapixel image and the image here on the left is just 4k the video image turned out way better and much much sharper I would say this is a good four times as sharp as the high resolution image that you see here on the right so it's, it certainly has a lot of merit, the shooting it as a video and then selecting the best frames. It's the oldest method that's around and it's still kind of the best one. So, hope you liked that, enjoyed and uh, learned some things. So, if you did learn some things, please subscribe, give me likes, and uh, we'll see you later.